but a head full of ghosts. Um, what inspired you to 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 write this book? Because I I know I've heard I've heard um, the Exorcist was it was an interview that I saw you mentioned the Exorcist yeah. and uh, obviously the documented of, of how uh, they go in and try to um, battle this uh, demon within. But what yeah. what was what inspired you to to write this book? Yeah, so it's funny. I was like 100 pages into a totally different novel that I was really struggling with. And it was like February of 2013. Um, and because I was really struggling with this other novel, like I was making excuses not to write it. I was like, oh, I'm going to read this now because it's research, <laughs> air quotes. And I happened to read this book of essays about the film The Exorcist. Uh, I think it was called The Exorcist Studies in the Night Film, which is a series of books that a, a specialty publisher in the United States called Centipede Press does. And it's a really interesting book. You know, they have a lot of cast and crew interviews, but there are also a lot of essays and, and critical pieces. And in some of the essays talked about the politics of the movie and the politics of the time. And I, I'd never really, you know, because to me, like The Exorcist was always like, oh, this is the scariest horror movie ever. That's how my parents would talk about it. That's how other people would talk about it. And it is a scary movie. Uh, but I never really thought of The Exorcist in those sort of, you know, political and social terms, like looking outside of the movie itself. Um so I finished reading that. I was just, I kind of had this moment of recognition. I was like, huh, like no one's really written uh, that I could remember a possession novel for a really long time. Like the last one I could think of was Sarah Grand's excellent Come Closer, but that was written in like in the early 2000s. Um, so it was like, geez, how would I write an exorcism? You know, how would I write a possession exorcism story? And so right off the bat, I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to approach it from like a secular skeptic's point of view. Um, and it really just grew really quickly from there. From that little thought experiment um you know once i had had the two sisters and i knew that there was going to be a reality tv crew into document you know the attempted uh, exorcism the, the plot of the story really unfolded quickly and you know more quickly than any other book that i'd written like it was all there i just had to <laughs> you know sit down and write it out you know and then it took a little bit of courage uh, for me to uh abandoned the other novel that I had started and you know I didn't tell my agent that I had abandoned the other novel that I'd started um you know because I know when you're writing uh I don't know if it's happening to you with plays it's like there's always the thread of oh a new shiny idea like c crops up while you're writing when it can be difficult and you know sometimes it's oh that you gotta be able to put the new shiny idea away and be like no I'm this is the thing I'm working on mm. um so I, I did have to decide, and thankfully I did decide, obviously, to dump the other novel and write a head full of ghosts. That sort of changed changed everything for me. But did you ever did you ever feel um, cautious? Because of course, I mean, it's different when it comes to writing a novel. But when you yeah. look at the horror genre, the I think what was it? Um, the Blair Witch Project started off this um, movement of handheld camera reality, you know handle camera naturalistic viewpoint of mm -hmm. right the camera is going to be you're right. the to the camera and obviously you had the paranormal activities you had the the last exorcism and a couple of other things would you a bit would you a bit um cautious in a way that you you were scared to fall into that trap of how am i going to make this different or am i going to fall into that category of oh they're, they're all the same because it's yeah the camera got the reality shows and you got this was did i ever come to your mind or did you start no i'm going to write this book <laughs> this is a good story. <laughs> I mean, there were other times during the writing of it where I wasn't sure if I was doing the right thing, but what you described was never a worry. And, and mainly because very early on, I knew in the novel I wasn't going to be able to avoid the William Peter Blatty and elephant in the room or the exorcist elephant in the room. And once I gave myself permission to engage with that movie, you know, uh, directly, it was like, oh, I'm going to like engage with all these other movies directly. And that actually that works to serve the theme of the novel. The theme of the novel is ambiguity. Like you don't know if Marjorie is or is not possessed. I never tell you that. Um, and then being able to reference and riff on all these other movies makes it harder for the reader, I think, to discern if something supernatural is happening or not. So no, I, with that book, uh, when I was writing it, I tried to watch every possession movie I could find and, and, and read all sorts of other ones too, or reread, I should say. You know, just so I could have all of that to use, like I said, to to make to make more muddy in the story what what was really happening and what wasn't really happening.